Welcome to IndyCar on the 18th of September. Now, the 18th of September, is it the 18th of September? No, it's not. It's the 19th of September. So there we go with the dates again. So it's the day after a historic milestone in Scotland's history, 10 years since the previous referendum. Now, in response to a lot of news which came out yesterday, it was tempting for me to make a, a real knee-jerk reaction uh, and make a lot of criticisms of the SNP. Now, I have made many criticisms of the SNP. Those of you who know me know that, A, I'm not a member of the SNP, and I believe in constructive criticism. So let's take what has happened over the last few days, particularly with regard to what Keith Brown of the SNP said uh, in the last 24, 48 hours. And Mr. Brown made it very clear in a lengthy statement that the SNP now regards the so-called gold standard of a Section 30 enabled referendum, one which asks permission from the United Kingdom. He now says that that is permanently closed, that there is absolutely no chance that the United Kingdom will ever sanction yet another British-run referendum, giving the people of Scotland a pair to decide whether they remain in the Union or not. Now, well done to Mr. Uh, Brown for finally stating the bleeding obvious, which we have all known about for 10 years, that there's never going to be another referendum sanctioned by the UK. They made it extremely clear. In fact, every single prime minister, and we've had God knows how many in the last few years, has said the same thing. Now is not the time. We're not going to give you another referendum. You decided it in 2014. It's over and done with. Forget about it. Get back in your box and just be good colonial citizens. Now, we know that that's not good enough, and the SNP knows it's not good enough as well. Now, Mr. Brown also made some positive comments uh, about uniting people behind the idea of independence and a lot of sort of vague generalities about things like some kind of constitutional convention um, where people get involved in the fight for independence. But in no part of his statement does he articulate any practical legal way in which the SNP plans to give us a vote on independence. Now, many of you reacting to the news yesterday have suggested things like, well, maybe it's time that the SNP changed. Some people have suggested that there should be a mass joining of the SNP and there should be some kind of internal coup where the branch members take over the entire party. Now, that is just not going to happen. Uh, the SNP has very, very firmly stamped its authority on that and branch memberships and even the SNP's own um, general conference every year prevent such things from happening. It's a very much a top-down organisation. And Mr Swinney uh, yesterday, I believe, made a statement in Holyrood um, and there was a vote on a move to back independence as an aspiration. Now, I haven't seen all of the uh, the debate on that. I know there was a positive vote in favour of the motion, but quite what the motion actually says that the Scottish Parliament is going to do about it, I can't really tell you because I haven't seen it that far ahead. It's a very long and involved debate. However, what I would say is that independence is not dead at all. In fact, the idea that the SNP would close down the very thing that they have been saying for 10 years, which was that we could have a gold standard referendum if we just asked for another Section 30 order for about the 10th time, is obviously not going to fly. And they've, they've now made that clear at last, after 10 years of telling us fibs about it being possible, they now accept that it isn't. But not only that, but the SNP also closed down the possibility of using the 2026 uh, general election in Holyrood as some kind of a, a plebiscite. In other words, have a, a segment of it. Uh, it was suggested by Ash Regan of Alba that the next uh, election to Holyrood be split in two. So you would have your first vote for the candidate in your constituency, and the first past the post system is normal, but the list vote where you vote for the party that you want should be repurposed as an independence vote. And if we get more votes than the combined unionists, parties, uh, voters in that second vote, that would be a referendum on independence. Now, the SNP has closed that down as well, saying that that's not going to happen. It was voted on in the SNP conference, incidentally. The idea of it was voted on in the SNP conference. Let me say something here. 
before I go any further, I'm not mm-hmm. certain whether Ash Regan is actually still in the SNP or whether mm-hmm. she's in Alba. Maybe somebody can correct me later on. However, um, to get back to the point, the motion, the idea that this referendum would happen as part of the general election was voted out by the SNP in Holyrood, I believe, uh, 125 votes to one against. So Ash Regan's idea has just been blitzed out of existence. So the SNP does not accept that it would use the next general election as a plebiscite. So what does that leave us with? Well, some people have suggested that we have a plebiscite anyway, and that's a possibility. However, it requires um, in the next couple of years for everybody in the independence movement, including many, I suspect many SNP members who are highly disillusioned and wondering what to do next, clutching at straws and I hope the SNP comes up with some new plan. But they are open to the idea of something new. And some people have suggested, this is not my suggestion, by the way, but some people have suggested that there should be some kind of alliance. Um, Many people favouring what's known as the Salvo Liberation Route, which involves, first of all, Salvo's efforts at the international courts to present the case for Scotland having the right to self-determination, despite any protestations by the United Kingdom that we used that either in 2014 or back in 1707 when we didn't get a vote on the Union at all. However, the point of this is that it can be proved that Scotland still holds the right to self-determination, that it's still a country in its own right, has its own laws, it has its own banknotes, for heaven's sake, it has its own education system, its own health service, and it is only things like international uh, relations, foreign uh, trade deals and defence, which the United Kingdom still keeps control of, as well, incidentally, as the so-called constitution, which of course the United Kingdom doesn't have. It has no written constitution, unlike Scotland, which has a thing called the Claim of Right, which sets out Scotland's constitutional status uh, as an independent state in which there is no monarch overarching everybody and in which the people are still sovereign. So how does this work? Well, the idea of the the Salvo route to independence is to continue the work that they've already started. As I mentioned in previous shows, there are or they have prepared the case for Scotland's self-determination to go to international arbiters. They have hired a King's Council, and it's very expensive and probably the most highly skilled lawyers in the land to present the case and also to give his own legal opinion of the actual um, documentation that's been prepared and that's now been okayed. So once that has been done and this case is made, we're searching for a ruling from international courts that Scotland does still retain the right to self-determination despite the United Kingdom's, you know, protests and wails of dismay that it doesn't. We can demonstrate uh, and I think almost all of us who have read up on the subject enough will know that Scotland easily qualifies under the United Nations definition of an exploitation colony. Uh, All of our major decision making is controlled from outside our country by another government in another country, basically in England. And um, we have no direct access to the necessary democracy to decide this issue been denied to us. We don't get the democracy. We're told it's not the time. Uh, It's never the time. And according to Keith Brown, it's never ever going to be the time. So once this salvo uh, situation has been resolved, if we get this ruling, and let's assume and be optimistic, we get the ruling that we do have the right to self-determination and that the other countries in the United Nations and other international bodies such as the EU accept that Scotland has this right then it leaves the door open to have a referendum, not sanctioned by the United Kingdom, but instead sanctioned by and perhaps even supervised by the United Nations or the EU or other foreign bodies, which would oversee the conduct of such uh, a referendum, a national referendum on such a vital topic. Now that very neatly, completely circumvents all of the tripwires and the booby traps and the 
blind alleys that the United Kingdom has repeatedly put in the way of Scotland's right to self-determination allows us to exercise that right perfectly legally and legitimately. But not only that, guarantees that all of the people in these other countries who now know Scotland's true constitutional situation would then accept the result and would accept that Scotland had voted to become independent again. Now remember, it's not that Scotland is, um, we're not seceding from the United Kingdom. We're not some small region of a big country that wants to secede. We're a country ourselves in a treaty with England. And it would simply be the dissolution of that treaty and the rewriting of relationships between Scotland and England in some new form whereby Scotland has full control of everything, but is still able to make um, treaties with England, treaties with the rest of the, the parts of the United Kingdom on thing, important things like trade and travel, uh, on defence even. We would have the ability to do all of that. But the nice thing about this is that it provides a lawful route to independence, one which has nothing to do with the SNP, it's nothing to do with party politics even. However, it does require a lot of support and it will take time for the salvo effort to show fruit. But in the meantime, we can still campaign to win seats at the next Holyrood general election, whether it's classed as a plebiscite or not. Electing officials who are in favour of this salvo liberation route involving external bodies from outside of the UK, that is one way of making sure that the Holyrood Parliament, when it comes to holding that referendum, will have enough of a majority in favour of doing so to make it happen in defiance of the United Kingdom's so-called UK law. Now, the United Kingdom will kick up a big fuss about this, but it would be kicking up a big fuss not just against Scotland, but against all the other countries involved in supervising the referendum. And that's very, very difficult for the United Kingdom's diplomatic service to deal with. And in fact, it would make, make it almost impossible for the United Kingdom to gain, say, the result of it, because they would be going against all of these other members of these international bodies in other countries. So it is possibly the only, uh, shall we say, conventional route towards independence that I can think of. Now, it doesn't involve a mass joining of the SNP to achieve this, but I would suggest, and this is just my own opinion, it's not fact, that parties that already exist. Now, remember, people often say that when a party registers uh, to take part in even a Scottish general election, they have to sign an oath of allegiance to the Crown, the English Crown. And that makes it impossible for them to do anything to go against the United Kingdom's sovereignty. Now, OK, they do have to sign an oath in order, they have to swear the oath in order to be elected officials. So to stand in an, an election, all of the parties, even the ones which do not agree with the oath and would not abide by it, still have to take it in order to get elected. But once they are elected, they can sit in that parliament at Holyrood, hopefully in the majority, and I'm talking about members of ALPA, members of the ISP, and perhaps even uh, Peter Bell's proposed New Scotland Party, if it's ready in time, stand enough candidates to displace the majority of the SNP seats, and basically to clear out some of the, or at least as many as possible, of the devolutionists from control in the Holyrood. Now that would be interesting because there would then be a majority of pro-independence parties in favour of this new referendum route. And if what was left of the SNP in terms of seats at Holyrood went against that, that would be a disaster for the SNP as a party. In fact, we could even force mass by-elections if they refused to cooperate on something so, so vital as this. It would force a real confrontation. So there are ways around this. But it, it's going to require the people, all of us here, to be pretty brave about it. And also for many of us who've never thought about a career in politics before, to join a political party that's not the SNP, which is in favour of independence and does favour the salvo liberation route as the way to get it.
So these are the broad brushstrokes of the situation that we now find ourselves in. And despite my anger um, over the last 24, 48 hours at the way the SNP has simply shut down all talk of any mechanism for getting independence has many people worried about what the SNP has actually become over the last 10 years. But I think it's safe to say that those of us who are not members of the SNP and many members who are still there but are absolutely gobsmacked by the attitude of Keith Brown and the rest of the SNP uh, parliamentary party may want to consider changing uh, their party allegiance and maybe go with another party. There's been, there's been much talk recently, uh, in fact there was a, a good deal of talk yesterday on my own feed about comments made by uh, Davy McGuinness of Indy Truck Davy. Now Davy and I go back a long way, we are old friends. I respect Davy's uh, position, he, he respects mine, but we do disagree on some things. And he made a comment where he said he felt that Alex Salmon was largely in irrelevance. Now that's David's opinion, which he's entitled to hold. I would disagree. I don't think anyone should ever write off Alex Salmond. He's one of the most durable survivors in politics. And during the period before 2014, in fact, for many years, 20 years before that, he was fighting alone virtually in Westminster. And largely the 2014 referendum was something which he helped in probably the, the most uh, the largest contribution made to it was by Alex Salmond. I don't think that should be forgotten. I don't think I would write him off quite so quickly. Um, he was also accused, I think, of forgetting Colette Walker's surname. Now, okay, people forget surnames, I forget names all the time. I don't hold that against Davy at all. However, we don't want to argue about things like whether Alex Salmond is relevant or not. He's the head of a party, uh, and a party which has gained a good deal of support and which appears to have turned itself into a really professional outfit. Now, I don't agree with everything in which Alba says. Nobody agrees with everything every party says. But having Alba there, and having the ISP under Clyde Walker there, and perhaps even the new Scotland party, which Peter Bell has proposed, perhaps coming into being before that general election, gives us an opportunity to form a huge alliance between those three pro-independence parties and Salvo and Liberation Scotland to deliver more seats than the SNP at the Holyrood 2026 election, enabling that parliament to then make the decision to hold the referendum, which would then be sanctioned by perhaps the United Nations and the EU and its observers. So that we can get this done, get it over with and stop pandering to the United Kingdom. Anyway, those are my thoughts for today. Uh, I'm sorry, it took me a long while to get to the point where I wanted to broadcast this today because it's never a good idea to make a broadcast when you're angry about something. I like to sleep on it and think about the consequences of what I'm saying a little bit before I say anything. But I hope that all of you out there, including my friends in the SNP, in Alpha, in the ISP, and in the, the new uh, Scotland party which Peter Bell has been tempted to set up, and I hope I wish Peter luck with this. I hope that all of you will take on board what I've said and have a look at what Salvo is planning to do. You can join Salvo for free, incidentally. You can join liberation.scot for free as well and sign up to the pledge that Scotland has its right to self-determination. It doesn't have to ask permission from Westminster to end a treaty. It just needs the cooperation of the international community and it's a blessing for us to go ahead. That is really all we need. That's it from IndyCar today. As I've always say, keep the faith. Um, this is not blind faith, by the way. There are practical routes to independence, and this is the most practical one that we have at the moment. So it's not faith in a party which might or might not come up with some secret plan. This is a route out, and it's a route that we ought to think about, all of us, from all of the independence parties. So I invite you all to talk about it. Try not to bicker with each other and call each other names. It's not helping us. I'm going to try not to do it either. I make my criticisms of the SNP. I have made certain criticisms of ALBA as well in the past. The ISP, I don't criticise at all because I like what the ISP is doing. Although they may do some things occasionally which I might disagree with. But that's life, isn't it? Anyway, I will see you soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. But remember, there's a route out of this. And if you keep the faith and we all work together, 2026 could completely change the 
arithmetic at Holyrood and allow us to take this salvo route. See you soon. Bye for now.